we went up to my dad's and as he was clearing stuff out, he had this big tote filled with, you know, cards, you know, my sister and I had sent to my mom and all this stuff and he didn't want to toss anything without us going through it. Well, here she had saved the newspaper article. And it's funny because when the way I associated all my memories, none of them really associated with, with the attack. And so here, when I found this newspaper article, I mean, it was just suddenly everything associated to it. And I was looking at past stuff differently than I had. And, um, and my mom had always said that I should write, that I should publish a, a book. And so part of me was thought, well, because it was her, she was the one that saved it. It was her handwriting on the top that had dated it, her cursive handwriting. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of like, okay, beyond the grave is this, you know, a sign for my mom that, ooh, geez, this is, this is a, a really good story to tell. When I started writing about it, I thought there are so many issues here that one could really, really discuss in terms of even beyond, okay, should I have gone to the police? or shouldn't I, but even with dealing with the friendships and everything else and the clothes I wore and everything, there, there were tons of issues within that that I thought this is perhaps too good of a story to keep to myself now. And to write the book is because, you know, we know statistically that this happens a lot and it doesn't get reported. Mm -hmm. And because of the, the complicating factors in mine, and the timeline, because it literally from, you know, the, the time I went on that first date all the way till I remembered, it was almost two full, well, it was two full school years. And um, I think, and my reasons for not coming forward, I look back on now and thought, oh, that was silly. You know, some of those things I should have just, I should have had a thicker skin. I should have just, who cares what so-and-so is going to say. Um, but at the same time, it was so real for me at the time that um, I think we forget when a sexual assault happens, we act like it happens in this bubble that, you know, it, it, it doesn't involve all these other things. And the fallout when you do report it, eh, you know, so be it. And it's a huge fallout. Um, it's, it's horrible. And even when I hear people talk about it today, it, it is like, well, just go report it as though you got mugged or as though you got in a car accident, you know, report it. And it's not that simple, um, especially with the way people react. Um, because one of the things that we assume is that the victim is always going to have her best friend, her family, everyone supporting her, and that's not the case. Um, and the newspaper article, and everything started reminding me of, of it. Um, my dad was, you know, cleaning out the house, so I was helping him, and we were gonna have a big garage sale. And um, so I, I thought, okay, this is a really good story to tell, but I didn't know how to tell it because I thought with the timeline, with everything that happened, how much do I leave in? How much do I put out? Um, and so I decided it was in April. So I found the article like the 1st of January or December 31st or whatever. And so in April, I thought, well, if I'm gonna write this, I have to write about the attack because if I can't write about that, I, I don't have a book. So it took me three days to write um, from the time we got home from the party until the time that the police showed up. So just that little chunk. It took me three days to write that. And when I finished writing and I thought, this happened so long ago, what if, what if, what if this is so distorted? So I contacted the Vermilion Police Department to get the actual police report because I didn't have that. I, obviously, I didn't want it for any reason. Um, and so I thought, well, let me compare. Let me see what they have in there and compare it to what I wrote. And obviously a police report doesn't care about your thoughts and feelings. You know, they don't care, you know, what you think could have happened or, or you know, how you felt about it. It's all just here is what happened. And um, the only thing that I had forgotten to write about was that the, the uh, highway patrolman checked the trailer um, because I was still afraid that, you know, he might be in there. Everything else matched up completely. And I thought, okay, I can do this then because I'm going to trust my memory about sexual assault. We talk about, you know, coming forward and going to the police, we just assume it is like a mugging or a car accident. Just go report it and there you go. Justice will be served when it's, it's not quite that simple. Oh, I, I think she'd be very proud of me. Um, she would probably remember, you know, I know she would remember Matt and how she encouraged me not to. <laughs> um, she would remember Katie and she would 
you know, she, she knew how much that bothered me when that went south. Um, I, knowing my mom, she would have wanted me to seek justice. She would have wanted me to, and she, she would probably be hurt that I didn't come to her. And one of the reasons I didn't come to her is because my grandpa had a stroke and she would have been like, you shouldn't have let that factor into anything. You should have just come to us, but, um, it is what it is, but I think she would be pretty proud of it.